Welcome to the Showcase of the Immortals! It's Manga Machinations! This is episode number 494. We're doing a triple dip. I'm Doc Zoo, and with me is Dark Fox 8. Uh, hello, it's me, Dark Fox 8. And Morgana Santilli! Hi there. Hello, everybody. We're recording as WrestleMania 40 is happening. Smoke him if you got him. Okay, I was. <laughs> so Seamus is out this week. Uh, he's gone back to Ireland for a bit. We miss him. But while Seamus is away, it's time for some shonen manga to save the day. Oh. Sh- shit that Seamus would never read. Shonen manga and some food shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> some wholesome food shit. Seamus ain't got no time for that. Well, yes, welcome to our podcast. Uh, We're essentially a book club for manga. In our main segment, we'll be doing a treble dip. We'll be looking at the first volume of three different manga. Uh, Stay tuned for that. Before I forget, I want to mention that if you want to support Manga Machinations financially, buy us a coffee. Head over to ko-fi.com slash manga mac. You can be one of the people who help support us. Darfox just put up the little graphic on our stream. We're streaming over on youtube.com slash TV. Our live recording is happening right now. But as you can see uh, there, our coffee. Uh, we are currently waiting for support to finish our Land of the Lustrous retrospective goal. We've already done uh, Berserk, funded by Philip. Uh, our upcoming Oak, the Inner Chambers retrospective, is funded by Manga Machu, Vicky Dalton, and Lulu. And I thank all the other supporters, Luluid, Mia, Wyatt, Dr. Meltface, Poor Mexican 72, Liquidus 002, Extine, and Jen. Thank you for supporting us. Very, very nice and kind. Uh, I have a quick update about the Oak Inner Chambers. That's still going to be a little time because Seamus is asking me to wait until he reads up on some books for research. Some real real books, history books, mm-hmm. books with facts. I was like, can I move it up? He's like, do you want to read these books? I was like, nope. <laughs> so I guess we'll wait. <laughs> he wanted to spread like the duty of reading on history. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of our uh, live chat for our live recording, we got Bunny Cartoon, a.k.a. Don, from the Anime Nostalgia Podcast. Welcome. Congratulations to Don. She uh, is going to Otacon. It's Otacon, right? I I think I remember that. And happy belated birthday to Dawn. Her birthday was Tuesday, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of belated birthdays, happy birthday, Morgana! <laughs> I, w- I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> okay, 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 sure. <laughs> but no, it's really easy to remember her birthday, because I think she's the second and I'm the fourth, so. Cool. Yes, you're a young 26? Yeah, right. <laughs> 34, baby! <laughs> I like being in my 30s. 34 is a good age. Yeah. Enjoy it while you can, because when you hit your 40s, your body starts breaking down like mine. Oh, trust me, mine's already not in great shape. <laughs> <laughs> and and having kids does not help. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, but, but in terms of, like, my attitude and my outlook, I feel like I'm a, in a much better place than I was, like, in my teens and 20s. Anybody who says, like, being a teenager is the best or like high school and college are the best years of their life they're full of shit yeah that's full I mean, of shit it's kind of sad you're carefree you you're carefree because you're true. still coming into it at all what that's true i wish i didn't have like taxes and at, bills and shit at Ugh. that point you should just say your best years were when you're six or five right. when i had when i knew nothing about anything was blissfully ignorant and had a lot of fun all day I was still allowed to take naps. Life gets better as you get older because you get wiser. 
and you've really got you really come into your own through your life experiences Definitely. however your body does it's the opposite it continues to break the fuck down and that sucks some yeah there there are some people who continue to to say fit and hale and healthy into their old age and i good for them yeah i don't foresee it for myself i hope for it but i don't foresee it yeah but yes uh before we get to an email darfox you and i have something to announce yes big announcement that already kind of uh went out on uh our Twitter, Discord, on Twitter and Discord, uh, social media. But we started a second YouTube channel. You might be thinking, a second YouTube channel? What the heck? What's going on? Well, um, we really wanted to try a different kind of content that we felt kind of didn't. Um, I th basically I didn't want to just fill up the Manga Mac TV YouTube channel with a bunch of uh like watch alongs and reacts. Um, so we're gonna do that on a new channel called Manga Mac Watches. So um, we already started watching uh, Dragon Quest, The Adventures of Dai, or sorry, yes. The Adventure of Dai. It's Adventure. Uh, yeah, I always, thought, I always thought it was Adventures, but when I've been rewriting the name a lot lately for the YouTube channel, it's like, oh, it's Adventure. So, um, Just and, one. Yeah, just one adventure. It's the big only one. Only one to have one. <laughs> <laughs> it's The Adventure of Dai. <laughs> Um, which has been really exciting, and that's the top one of the topics of today's uh, podcast. So it's going to be fun to compare and contrast that. Um, and it's also really exciting to watch it with Dagazu because that's like, uh, and Dagazu is going to talk a lot about this uh, today on this podcast. Oh, we'll get to it in the main segment. Yeah, I have but, an entire rant prepared. <laughs> but it, it, that is Dagazu's like show. That that is like Dagazu's storyline that he grew it's up. My with. childhood. That's his action shonen book. Um, that is that is it for him. Um, so it's fun to sense his excitement and also his expertise on Dragon Quest Die. Um, and, uh, but we're also, um, one of the reasons why I wanted to like branch out or a whole new channel so we could focus on this is that we're going to watch a lot of like the new anime coming out this season. Um, not all of it cause that, that'll be torture watching a bunch of <laughs> anime that we don't care about. Um, but, um, we're going to be teaming up with, um, Lenny Boat who's a friend of the podcast and um, ARG Bomb Show, who's been on the YouTube and watch some of the shows that they're into. Um, so I uh, can't no promises on being like day and day. It's not like we're going to watch the, the moment it comes, it comes out simulcast, uh, record it, upload it in one hour. It's probably not going to be like, it's probably going to be a couple of days afterwards. It depends on all of our schedules. We're all adults with jobs and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. And, um, the, the the URL should just be um at manga mac TV sorry uh, at manga mac watches so the same way you look about URLs you'll be able to find that one it's also linked on the YouTube channel if you're already on that um so go check it out right now we only have two watch alongs but I plan on making highlight videos and reacts and that kind of stuff on it the kind of typical kind of content you will normally see um for like anime stuff that we never did. Um, but I really wanted to play around with it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Listen, it's spring of 2024 and the Fable anime is coming out. Dark yes. Fox had to do something about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's part of like, I mean, I know I'm going to watch Fable and I, we should probably just do some sort of content with it. And um, this is like, um, you know, th th this is one of the ideas. Um, and as far as the uh, Manga Mac TV, um, that's still going to be like reviews that uh, ARG Bomb Show and I do that we upload. And there's other stuff that I'm like slowly working on. There's kind of new forms of content that I want to put on there. Um, but like r right now, uh, Manga Mac Watches is kind of like the new hotness. So we're going to pump out some stuff on there. Please be excited. Yep. I'm looking forward to watching all 100 episodes of Dragon Quest: The Adventure of Die hey, with if, Dar. If you go, if you go on that uh, YouTube uh, channel, you look at the YouTube videos. They are numbered zero zero one zero zero two. I'm planning, <laughs> and I'm, I'm I'm numbering them as if we're going to watch all 100 of them. So, <clears throat> yep, none of that incorrect oh. file sorting around here. Hopefully that will happen. We'll see. This is still exp at the kind of experimental phase, but. Uh yeah, it's maybe, exciting. Maybe for you. <laughs> <laughs> Dar is like, no, we're in it. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh, we that... got a 
Cliff in the chat. He's excited about it. So thank you, Cliff. You know, N Nana has an anime. Hmm. Oh, you got a mm. report guy in this. <laughs> hmm. Let me go watch Nana. I've never seen Nana. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some of Nana, so I know Morgana's reaction. My husband and I watched Nana together um, many years ago, and it was basically like when we were asking each other if we wanted to watch it, you know, at come, come evening time, we turned to each other and be like, so you want to cry? <laughs> you ready? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go cry. Um, it's good. It's very good. It's got really good music. Uh, it, you, don't do not expect a satisfying ending from that. It, it's incomplete, right? It, it's incomplete. The manga yeah. is incomplete too. I've not actually read all of the manga. I think I've read like sixteen of the volumes, and there's like twenty one or something. Uh -huh. And it's been on hiatus for over a decade. So don't expect a satisfying ending from the anime. Don't expect to agree with the choices pretty much anybody makes. Uh, <laughs> okay. It is. It is my one. Usually, I don't like like messy soap opera bullshit, but for some reason, Nana is like. It's like catnip. It's Nana. so good. Yeah. I've also never seen uh, Utena. So um, when we're off season and when we're not watching a bunch of brand new anime, there's tons of stuff that um, I could catch up on. And it just kind of depends on who I rope into um, watching it with me. I watched like the first 13 or 14 episodes of Utena and I stopped because the last episode I watched was a recap. And I just was like, I'm. I literally just marathoned all of these. You really don't need to give me a, a recap episode. <laughs> it, if it, we do Utena, we could get Seamus to do it. Probably. Yeah. Oh yeah. He would do it. He likes Utena. Yeah, I, I think the 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 recap uh, hump is a is a famous stopping point in like almost all anime. It's just like, am I gonna watch this recap episode? Oh, I watched it, and then I was like, okay, I think I'll take a break for a while. And then I just never made my way back to it because I was bitter. Uh, Cliff wants to know if we're going to be watching Demon Slayer. So I could the, do it. There is a Demon Slayer anime this season, um, but I'm not caught up. So I'm just going to have to decide whether I'm going to like skip over season two. I'm not sure what season I'm I'm, I'm missing. I, I didn't watch anything after Mugen Train. You're going to be so confused. <laughs> you're gonna be so confused i mean it doesn't start till like may so you have some time does it really is it start with other shows no okay i'm i'm, I'm i might make an effort to to catch up because it'd, it'd probably be fun to um it'd probably be fun to watch uh the dm series that comes out but yeah we're uh look forward to uh more content from us in manga mac watches Let's move along, though. We have a lot of things to cover. I got a quick email to do. This email is from our buddy Chris from Canada, and it's titled Anime First. Hello, Team Anime Machinations. This time, I have an anime question for you. I was thinking about it the other week about properties that started as an anime before becoming a manga. What are some notable titles that started as an anime before getting a manga adaptation? Was the manga or anime better? The only titles I really know of, if I'm not wrong, are Evangelion and Eureka 7. Have a good weekend. That dude from up north, Chris from Canada. Peace. Ooh, 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 ooh. ooh. Is that what he wrote? He did write it. I added an extra oot because okay. I didn't like put the melody right. Cowboy Bebop had, I think, at least two pretty bad manga adaptations. It's an anime first. Dar Fox knows a uh, animated manga adaptation called uh, the, the the Masaki Yuasa surfing one. Oh yes, um, Ride Your Wave. Ride Your Wave, which was also bad. <laughs> yeah, I I famously kind of lampooned that manga on the podcast. I say famously just because I never really like shit talk a manga. I, I say like I kind of didn't like it. I, I didn't want to read it more. But this one, I was like, damn, this is this was like a waste of people's time, and it was a waste of paper. It was like, it it just was, it just existed to to, to be a product. It, like the, there was hardly any merit to it. Yeah, I in general find that if a manga adaptation 
if there's a manga or even a novel adaptation of some other media the and the 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 literary version did not come first either the manga or the novel that adaptation is not necessarily going to hold up the one exception i've i've found so far is the goddamn elden ring manga is so good um <laughs> yeah. and i'm and i'm not just saying that because uh, it's yen yeah, it's really ridiculous and fantastic um but it's very different it's very you know in, in a lot of ways from the source material which i think helps um but again that's from a game to, right yes yes yeah, not an anime to a uh, manga no i don't know that i've I've I avoid manga that were adapted from an anime. I think. Yeah. I tend. I to, do the same. Yeah, I tend to not want. And honestly, like a lot of times, I don't even like double dip. Like I don't read a manga and also watch the anime a lot of the time. Like I'll do one or the other. That's yeah, not. I'll do both. That's not a hundred percent true, but like I mean, nowadays I just read manga. I barely watch any anime, but um historically like i'll usually do one or the other unless i really really love them you know what i'll do morgana is an anime starts that i've never heard of and then i'm like oh this is based on a manga and then i just read the manga <laughs> yep <laughs> um chris mentioned in the email about the evangelion manga i have read that and you know what that manga did some good things really interesting things i know a couple people who like the manga but don't like the anime yeah it's kind of interesting like they kind of went back and fixed some of the narrative throughout and then especially the ending the ending is very different and it's very satisfying it almost kind of does what the uh, reboot anime movies did with the evangelion series a little bit right so that's that's like a one case i know of where the manga it, maybe it's not better, but you know it's at least on par, or like it does something else with the uh, with the actual anime source material in the manga form. Yeah, uh, Don in uh, chat is pointing out that the character designer for Eva he drew the manga, and so it ended up being like looking really great too. Did you know there was a Eureka Seven like manga dar? I did. Yeah, and I've. Uh... I've I, I did the bad thing one 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 time and I looked at the very end of the last volume and I saw like how it ended, which is different from how the anime ends. And this is kind of interesting ending. All right. Um. It would it it seemed high quality. It didn't seem like. I, I, granted, I, just, I was just flipping through it. it. It didn't seem like the type of thing that I dislike. It just seems like. It's going through the motion and just trying to sell a product. It's, it seemed like whoever was drying it was really committed to it, and it, it looked nice. Um, and it's maybe an interesting take on the ending compared to uh, the anime. I, I It almost feels like a demake when you go from anime to manga. It shouldn't be that case, because obviously manga has its own like really strong qualities but you know when you go from an anime you lose the motion you lose the voice acting any kind of soundtrack sound effects it's you're taking away certain senses that you also get to enjoy so unless it's right. doing something really unique i don't think it's going to do anything better Hence the ride your wave manga cash in <laughs> thing. They all feel like cash ins. Well, with the ride your wave, like part of the credits was like ride your wave committee or some shit like that. So it just, it was just clear that like this movie was funded in in such a way that when they when when they decided on the funding, they were like, okay, we're gonna make a movie, release a CD, and release a manga book. Like, it was just it was just part of w whatever the. The, the the funding acquiring it was the, the they, media mix if you will yeah um which which isn't like a bad thing um as long as people all along that chain are invested in what they're doing and it didn't seem like anybody was invested outside of that movie i think the right movie is really cool really emotional very uh my my, my super nice boyfriend died movie <laughs> it's not a spoiler that's like the premise of the movie 
A burrito so, sadness. Here we come. Burrito sadness. <laughs> um, Manga Mac. Um, <laughs> where did the burrito sadness come from? <laughs> you did. It came from you. No, but like, what were you we talking about? You're talking I'll... about the uh, what was it? The fucking movie about the robot that delivers letters. Oh yeah, the oh damn yeah, that was so bad. Um, what was that? What was that, what was that uh, called? I kind of remember. She has the mechanical hands. She she types letters. Yeah. Violet Evergarden. Violet Evergarden. Thank you. Yeah, I okay. watched I watched the movie with that with ARG Bomb Show and that movie was nothing just but a bunch of like burrito sadness just, just crying that's where it came and, from. <laughs> yeah um, all all food-based analogies seem to be yours dar <laughs> it's true i got the misery gristle as well <laughs> I forgot about that one. <laughs> that one's so good. And then we were talking. There's a chocolate one recently. That was from uh, Yokohama Kaidash Kiko recently. Yes. Yeah. That was a good one, actually. I really. Oh yeah, that yeah, one. yeah. That one was because um, you got a bunch, of, you got a bunch of pieces of chocolate, and they all have different flavors in them. But when you eat them back to back to back, you can't really taste them because they're just a bunch of chocolate. Yep. <clears throat> oh, Don is popping off in chat with a lot of good uh, suggestions. The uh, Gundam The Origin is actually a very good example of a positive thing where they took the anime and then they went back and did that first uh, story. And that got animated again. It was a complete loop. They did, But they didn't animate from the beginning of the manga. They animated later story arcs that were flashbacks. Oh, interesting. So, so if you read volume one of the manga, it's kind of like it's sort of the start of the anime series with uh, Amuro. But if you watch episode one of the Gundam of the Origin, it's um, I think it starts with Shar's backstory when he was a child. Um, they they had a slightly different take on it when they animated it. Um, but uh, yeah, it, that is actually a great example because Gundam of the Origin is a really nice looking book and it's 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 pretty good. Yeah, Don also says the Utena Escaflone. Uh, they did a media mix and the manga was uh. Very different. So that you know, sounds good. I have the Utana manga and I still haven't read it. They uh, released a like two volume hardcover box set a while back. It's beautiful. And I own it and I still have to read it. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should check it out and let us know. Yeah. Yeah, Media Mix is a little different, like when they already plan to do like different stuff. I guess one of the most famous media mixes is um Pat Labor. Because yeah. you had the Pat Labor anime TV show, the Pat Labor uh, anime movies, and the uh, manga by Yuki Masami, which is excellent. It's still a crime that we don't have that whole thing available. One day. One day One there day. will be a strong enough bump from the manga mic verse. <laughs> we can keep dreaming. All right, let's wrap up this email. Thank you for your email, Chris. If you want to send us emails, send them over to mangamachinations at gmail.com, and we will read them. Okay, let's do some What You Been Reading. Uh, Morgana, you have anything this week? No. No? <laughs> You're not sure? No. <laughs> okay. I, I have not. Uh... No, I just been I just read what we had to read. It's been a it's been a crazy week, my friends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Dark Fox, you read anything? Um I had something I've been kind of saving. Um but I I might as well just fire it now because by the time I do something that I really want to do with it, it might be a while from now. But I read the first volume of uh, Zom 100, which is oh, a, okay. it's a pretty popular series right now. I didn't know anything about it when I read it. Um I had seen some images from the anime, and I knew there was, like, a booby girl in it. And it's not, like, ha an anime that has a booby girl in it. I immediately, like, this, like, it's not, like, that means it was bad. But I just, like, assumed there's going to be, like, a lot of fan service or, like, a lot of, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe lowest common denominator stuff. And it may yet still be that, having just read the first volume. But I will say, uh, the first volume has a really great uh, premise and a really energetic start. Um, and it just um, was generally a really fun read. If you don't know what Zom 100 is, it's basically a, a bucket list that the main character who kind of like wasted or is, is wasting away in his in an office job, one of those terrible salary, salary men jobs, 
um, he's so miserable that, that when the zombie apocalypse starts, he's like, yes, I don't have to go to work. And that's like the big gag in the manga. Is that like his life was so shit. The monotony of like the grind was so bad that he rather the world be apocalypse and falling apart and people be dying. That's that's more interesting to him. Um, and he, he's like, OK, now that it's zombie apocalypse, I, I'm not beholden to anything. I could do everything I wanted to do. And he actually writes out like a bucket list. And it shows you the bucket list in the manga, at least partial of it in the first um, volume. And you see him scratching out certain things that you watch him do in the first volume. Um, so, um, it's, uh, um, it's, it's, it's pretty lighthearted. It's not like, uh, a, a sad, weird manga, at least in the first volume. Um, and just clearly a lot of characters. I haven't seen the booby girl character that I've seen in like trailers of the anime series. So she's clearly comes in later. Th there is another, um, girl character that appears who was a uh, pretty interesting. She was, she was like, um, like hardcore survivalist, like in, in that she didn't have interest in anybody but herself. So she barely appears in, in the in the volume. She just literally walks by the main character and the main character tries to talk to her and she just blows him off. Um because she's like just she's just gathering her supplies or whatever. Um but yeah like the, the stuff he wants to do are like it ranges from like really extravagant stuff like uh or not really extravagant but like you know like like high exhilaration stuff like uh uh, skydiving to like really simple stuff like um, sleep in and play video games until midnight or something like that right like just very simple things um, and one of them was like wine and dine uh, two um, flight attendants uh, um, a and the plane and I was like that's really weird how could you do that like that that's really weird to put on there why would you put that in a zombie apocalypse but then ARG bomb show who also read it read ahead and it said that that actually just ha that happened soon after the first volume so like i think everything that you see written in the list they actually will get to eventually even if it sounds like weird and like like not attainable yeah zom 100 is very good i've been reading i started reading from the middle because it runs in um or a sunday wait does it actually run in sunday gx Maybe it used to. Right now, like, I see it in Ura Sunday. Maybe it does run uh, Sunday GX. Sorry. My thing about that is um, it's the manga art is done by Kotaro Takata. It's relatively new. But the interesting thing to me about Zam 100 is the it's written by Haro Aso. And he's the manga artist behind Alice in Borderland, which is now like a super popular live action like Netflix series. That's the thing that caught my eye. I was like, oh, that Alice in Borderland guy is doing a zombie manga. And then when I looked at it, I was like, oh, wait, that's not his artwork. So he's just a writer. But yeah, that thing is very lighthearted. Uh, there's the anime dar. <laughs> you gonna add that to the manga back watches list? I, I think it looked I, good. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it looks fresh. I I think uh, it, maybe like, like I said, we're we're, we're gonna like hunker down and see what what we're gonna focus on with the new season, and then afterwards it's like so whatever we want. All right, very nice, Star. Anything else? No. Okay, I'm gonna talk about uh two things. First, let me talk about the Windbreaker anime. Morgana, it started this season. Windbreaker. Mm. Those delinquents of justice who protect a town. Those good, good boys. Those good, good boys. And the main boy with the black and white hair. It's uh, The anime is really nice. It's done by Cloverworks, and uh, the first episode has some really good action, which I was not expecting. I was like, damn, this action is really good, and these fights are really nice. And this poor main character, who's like a delinquent who's been shunned all his life, comes to this town and joins this school. And it turns out the high school, all, all the delinquents at that school are delinquents of justice who protect the town from outside people. 
AKA Morgana's bread and butter. <laughs> yeah, Morgana, I highly recommend you check out the anime. You will love it. Maybe I will check out the first one tonight. Uh, got like three zillion piles of laundry to fold, so <laughs> sit there and watch. And watch and, and fold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, check it out. I think you'll really, really like it. I'm definitely going to keep watching it. It's on uh, Crunchyroll right now, so exciting stuff. Okay, next I want to talk about uh, a pair of manga I read that go together. There's a manga artist named Hiroshi Takahashi. Morgana, you would love this guy because all he's done in his life is draw delinquent manga. Good lord. <laughs> what is it? The delinquent Tuesday? Have you heard of a super popular delinquent series called Crows? Yes. I think I have heard of this. Hiroshi Takahashi is the man behind Crows. And he w he did so many spin-offs of Crows. It's been live action adapted. I I said that really weird. <laughs> adapted. <laughs> it's been adapted into a live action movie, multiple movies. Uh he he then expanded the Crows uh manga by making a new series called Worse that takes place in the same universe, focusing on another uh, high school and another group of delinquents all getting into battles. It's uh it's just good, you know, manly delinquents with fisticuffs and beating each other and like earning each other's mm. respect. Anybody have <laughs> anybody have the crow makeup? LOL. <laughs> I don't know, that's a legitimate question. I don't know if they were like biting off the crow or anything like that. Uh, I don't know, Dar, because I actually haven't read Crows. I started getting into uh, Hiroshi Takahashi when I read his uh, sequel series, Worst. And I really liked that Dolinka manga. It was awesome. Very entertaining. So, let's see. In 2015... Hiroshi Takahashi started a new manga series that he was writing, and the artist was Yantse Kazu, a new manga artist, and it kind of shows. But they started a manga called Orens. Dar, I'm sending you a link to uh, the first chapter of Orens. The premise, Morgana? It's delinquents in the post-apocalypse. That's all it is. Oh yeah, the art is a little stiff. Yeah, it's not the best. But uh, this series, Orens, that started in 2015, it became very popular. Like this concept of, it's the post-apocalypse. And then you have all these gangs, aka these delinquent gangs of dudes teaming up. And working together in like the post apocalypse, getting into battles, trying to survive. There was a big uh, catastrophe that split this continent where this takes place on with earthquakes. There's also a breakout of a disease that uh, infects people, basically turning them into like mindless zombies. They're called, uh, it's called the black eyes because their eyes turn black. And so they're dealing with all this, and these delinquents are, like, getting into scuffles and rivals and fighting each other. And it's, it's you know, it's post-apocalypse, so it's a lot more violent than a typical delinquent manga. They're obviously using, like, knives and, like, sometimes guns in a rare instance. But it, it was popular. Orens has been going for a while and still ongoing. In fact, it was so popular that Hiroshi Takahashi... Decided to launch his own series in the same universe as a sister series to Oren's called Jank Runk Family. <laughs> the title's weird. Dar, I want you to now pull up the uh, first chapter of Jank Runk Family and take a look. And you will see, oh, that's right. Hiroshi Takahashi is a way better manga artist. <laughs> In fact, I learned about this series because I was reading Junk Runk Family first. Because I'm like, oh, it's another Hiroshi Takahashi manga, and he did a post-apocalypse. It's post-apocalypse. 
later I learned that, oh, this is based off of, you know, this is a spinoff from O-Rinse, which someone else drew. It's funny because you can see how much uh, how much better an artist he is than uh, uh, Yansei Kazu. It's fucking Mad Max with Yankees. Yep. That's all it is. That's all it is, Morgan. It's fucking great. I was going to say, I ain't mad about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's a niche genre, the uh, delinquent genre, but it, uh, you know, people who like it, they really like it. Sure do. <laughs> and so this is, a, this is a kind of fun take on that, being in the post-apocalypse. But still, like, guys, like, hugging it out. Getting into battles and then coming back and becoming bros. Oh, so good. <laughs> Morgana's bread and butter. That brotherly love, man. Mm-hmm. Jank Runk Family. <laughs> love Jank. What a title. I know, but it's funny. What do you pronounce in Japanese? It's Junk Runk. Oh, it is Junk. Because I thought it was Junk. Junk Rank Family. That's what you think it is, but it's the opposite. Jank Runk family. It's the name of the uh, the gang you follow, the outside gang you follow in this series. Outside gangs are gangs that don't like they don't have a place that they kind of like hang out in. They roam the wasteland, Mad scrounging Max. supplies and getting into scuffles. Yeah, it's totally Mad Max. They got like vehicles decked out with you know blades and shit okay that's all I wanted to say about Jank Runk Family and Orens they're both very entertaining and I like them oh I have, we have a random question from Cliff in the chat have any of you seen Shogun on FX slash Hulu fantastic series I have not but I've heard good things about it and I didn't necessarily expect it to be good. Um, I also hear it's a heavily subtitled show, meaning they don't make the Japanese characters speak English. They just let the Japanese characters speak Japanese, which is like a... It seems like an obvious choice, but it isn't a choice always made in television. They find some sort of conceit to make everybody speak English. Um, sounds interesting. It's a remake of the old serial, um, which I think was based on a f- book... Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Uh, I'm a little apprehensive because I heard about the concept and I was like, is this another white man comes into like foreign country? It, it is. The, well, the original one, I, I don't know if, if it was truly problematic or anything, the original one, but it, it did. I think that original miniseries was like ground zero for a lot of like Eastern fetishization, Japanese fetishization. It was just like, oh, like these honorable samurai, you know, like a lot of it was a lot of people's first kind of like view into it was in pop culture to like so, some of that, um, I guess you could say almost like history revisionist version of samurais or whatever. The idea of honor and all that stuff like that. Um, you did think the last samurai and, and, and that kind of like uh, hyper honorable view of, of what samurais are. Um, I have no idea if, if this new one, I have the, a feeling that this new one is actually a lot better and a little smarter than that, but I haven't watched it myself. I just hear people really like it. Maybe I'll check it out and I'll report back, Cliff. But yeah, let's uh, end what you've been reading. It's a little earlier, but you know, I'm going to rant in the main talk fix, so <laughs> let's, uh, let's end early. Okay, before we get to the main segment, let's talk about next week. So when Seamus is away, it's time for another Shoujo Showdown! Whoop, whoop, whoop! <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah, uh, Morgana, you have curated a list of Shoujo Jose titles for us to check out, and we've made some picks! We will be looking at... 
Yakuza lover. A sign of affection. And neighborhood story. I'm excited about neighborhood story because it is by Ai Yazawa, famous of Nana. Yeah, I'm also excited about that. I have not read any of these. Um, I bought Neighborhood Story when it came out a couple months ago, more than a couple months ago. But I buy books and don't read them. You save them for Manga Mac. Basically, yes. I did that with, <laughs> I did that with uh, Kimono Jian <laughs> this week, too. So Don is popping off in the chat about Neighborhood Story. <laughs> she is excited. Uh, let's see. A sign of affection. It sounds like a silent voice a little bit. Because the main character is deaf. I've heard it's very, very good. It's much... Um, it's, I mean, it's a romance. Uh, so it's, it's more romance heavy than silent voice, I think. Um, but I've heard excellent things about it. People really, really like it. There was an anime that was really popular uh, last season, I think. So I'm I'm really curious about it. Mm -hmm. And then we have Yakuza Lover. This one's steamy. I don't. I haven't read it, but it's steamy. We gotta read, read it. it with a yeah. You can read it with a Viz subscription, but you have to read it on their website. It's eighteen plus, not for children. Saucy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Don's also excited about us uh, checking out. Sign of affection, but there you go. For next week, we'll be doing Shoujo Showdown. It's essentially a triple dip with Shoujo titles, Jose titles. And yeah, we'll be looking at Yakuza Lover, A Sign of Affection, and Neighborhood Story. Stay tuned for that. All right, before we get to our main segment, let's take a quick break. We'll be dropping the stream for a bit. But when we come back, it'll be time for a triple dip. Stay tuned. Okay, everybody, we are back. It's time for a special triple dip. We're looking at manga that Seamus would not read. <laughs> for this triple dip, uh, we looked at Papa and Daddy's Home Cooking. We also looked at Kemono Jihen. And finally, we looked at Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai. Let's see. Uh, what order shall we do this? You know, Morgan, I'm going to let you pick the first one. What shall we talk about? Mm, I kind of feel like we should rip off the band aid and, and let you rant about Dai. Just, All right. just like get it out there and so we can <laughs> move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai. This manga is written by Riku Sanjo, the artist by Koji Inada. And it was made in collaboration with Yuji Hori, the creator of Dragon Quest. So, Japanese title Dragon Quest Dino Daibouken started in 1989 and weekly shown in Jump. It ran for 37 volumes total. It's now being put out in English from Viz. And let me just get the localization credit out of the way. Wait, is that the front? Oh, it's at the front. Okay. English translation and adaptation, Gregory Werner. Touch-up art and lettering, Steve Dutro. Editor, Jennifer Sherman. Let me go ahead and read the copy. Before his adventure begins, Dai lives in peace 
as the lone human among monsters on Del Marine Island. While he dreams of becoming a hero, a group of fakes show up to kidnap the golden metal slime. Then, when Princess Leona arrives in need of a hero, Dai is ready to answer her call. But he needs more training. Will a tutor come along to help him? So these English editions that we have put out from Viz, they are based on uh, a new edition that came out to celebrate the anime of Dragon Quest The Adventure, Adventure of Die, which Star Fox, you and I have been doing a watch along of. And, uh... Okay, so this is what I'm going to say about this at the top. Morgana has Yu Yu Hakusho. And Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm. More Yu-Gi-Oh. Morgana mm -mm. has Yu-Gi-Oh. More Yu Hakusho, probably. Okay, okay. <laughs> Dar Fox has Trigun. See, I was going with Yu-Gi-Oh! Because when we did our Yu-Gi-Oh! episode, you went off. Yeah, because there are a lot of problems with Yu-Gi-Oh! that need to be hashed out. <laughs> <laughs> I love Yu-Gi-Oh! And it took up a lot of my time, but I think Yu Hakusho is my, like, it's my big one. Mm -hmm. And Dar Fox, on the, on the Trigun episode, you went off. I'm about to pop the fuck off about Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die. This is my childhood shonen manga. I grew up reading this manga. I really enjoyed it. At the time, I was like into the video games of Dragon Quest. And uh, I also, there, you know, there are other manga. Based on Dragon Quest, there's actually quite a few. But probably the most famous one and the most beloved one is this one. Dragon Quest Dino Dai Bulken. At the same time, there was a uh, Dragon Quest manga writing in Gangan called uh, Monsho... Uh, Roto no Monsho. Which is an emblem of Roto. And that manga was more like a direct sequel to Dragon Quest Three, So that was interesting in its own aspect, like following the lore of Dragon Quest Three and making a story off of that. Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai is an original story. And apparently, like, this, this was mentioned in an essay at the end of, like, the Japanese Volume 1. And I'm kind of sad that it wasn't included in this uh, English edition. They don't have, like, the essays. But Yuji Hori, the creator of Dragon Quest, wrote about how he was approached to, you know, do a manga about Dragon Quest. And he was like, what does that mean? I'm not sure about this. Are they just going to recap the story of, from the video games? But, you know, people have played the video games. And at the time, Dragon Quest IV was about to come out. He's like, I don't want to spoil that. So they decided to make an original story within the world of Dragon Quest, following a new hero and his adventure die and let me tell you yuji hori and riku sanjo this creative team they're fucking amazing to together yuji hori is really understands drama he understands like exciting like story bits and like callbacks he's a great writer riku sanjo is very good Unfortunately, in this uh, collection we read, which is Volumes 1 and 2 put together, it's very much it's still in his early stages. You can see some glimmers of like his impressive artwork, but as the series goes on, he is really, really impressive when it comes to like creating new monsters and characters and showing off flashy like battles. That comes later. Very deep Mungamac lore. Little tidbit. Yuji Hori and Riku Sanjo teamed up again to make a manga called Beat the Vandal Buster. It had oh. an anime. Yeah, you've heard of Beat the Vandal Buster, Morgana? Mm -hmm. I never it read it, but... Mm -hmm. uh, that manga itself had a very sad story where um, Riku Sanjo got very like ill, and they, they had to basically like stop. Also, like the, the magazine they were publishing that in went fucking kaput, and so that Beat the Vandal Buster was like, in limbo. It's now currently running again. 
and it's running in a quarterly magazine. That means that only four magazines come out a year. So Riku Sanjo can take his sweet ass fucking time drawing that. That's also where D. Grayman runs now because that manga artist had a similar story where they broke down their body and now they need their time. And now they got it. But anyway, the manga Mac lore part, Morgana, is that for the longest time, our outro music for manga machinations for like hundreds and hundreds of episodes was Wishmen, a song from an opening of Beat the Vandal Bluster. That's so funny. Mm-hmm. It's also on our soundboard in Discord. Dark Fox uses it <laughs> very much <laughs> all the time. Along with the uh, soundboard of the first opening, right, Dar? Ooh, baby. Is that the first opening? Ooh, baby. It, it, is Emotion the first opening? Emotion is the first opening. I did it's not know that. It's a weird fucking song for opening. You yeah. didn't know that? I didn't know. I, 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 I fell in love with Emotion just completely because I was listening to Wishman a lot. And I was like, oh, this other music video there is. And I started listening to Emotion. And Emotion is really good. Great music video, too. Yep. All and right. Part of the Manga Mac tapestry. Yes, it is. Getting back to... Uh, Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die. This perfect edition, or whatever this new edition is, looks fucking great. Holy shit. I cannot believe how sharp all the images are. They included color pages, which I don't think I've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. And like they also have like the four color pages, the ones that have kind of like a gray and red scale to them. Like those chapters are all in four color. And it looks Amazing. It looks so good. I I thought the the translation was okay. It pretty much did the job. I didn't have a lot of complaints. But like it, it like the King of Romos, he speaks in a very much, oh, I'm a big I'm a king, and I have like, you know, the venerated speech. And I kind of didn't like that. I don't think it matched like the tone for Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die. I think, Morgana, you could tell from reading this that it's very much aimed at children. Yeah. I would say back when this manga started, you know, Dragon Ball was still running in the magazine. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure was still running in the magazine. I feel like the readership of Weekly Shonen Jump was a little younger at the time. Yeah, it feels younger than... I mean, it, when I was reading it, it felt a lot like Dragon Ball in terms of tone. Mm -hmm. um, so earlier, kind of younger shonen stuff. I think the funny thing about that is you read that and they have the cartoony characters with cartoony reactions. Mm -hmm. And then, like, fucking violates. <laughs> like, Hammer yeah. gets his arms fucking, like, like chopped really, off. Yeah, I was kind of surprised at how much blood and, and violence there was. And, di and dying like death mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and like die killing monsters like for real real <laughs> yeah uh yeah i will say the beginning of the manga is all right it's not the greatest morgan something you probably uh may not have been aware of the first two chapters are called Gu gush gulp and this is because when they decide to make this manga this was going to be a one-shot. It was only going to be those two chapters. But here's the thing. It was popular. So they came back and they did the three-chapter die o might And that was also popular. And then the editorial was like, we're going to make this a full series. But technically, the start of the manga is the tale of the hero Tudor, which is like right. six chapters in. And, like, the, the manga series is filled, obviously, it's in the world of Dragon Quest, so all the spells are Dragon Quest. By the way, I mentioned this to Dar while we were doing uh, the watch-along for the anime. The English Dragon Quest spells are awful. <laughs> they are so fucking stupid, <laughs> okay? Like, the, the flame spell, Mera is the Japanese name, you know, they're... They don't mean anything. They're all made up like spell names, but you know, they're made up. They have their own sound. It's interesting. And then in English, it's frizz. And like the strongest 
Flame spell is Kafriz. It's like, oh god. Okay, there was one exception to this, and I kind of know why this is. Um, this, like I'm gonna get full spoilers. I'm jumping around all over the place. Okay, but uh, Avan, the tutor, who turns out to be the previous hero who defeated Hadler, to save, die to save Popu, to save Brass, he does a suicide spell called Megante. Megante is the Japanese name of the spell. Do you want to know what the English name of the spell is called? Kamikaze! Mm, guys. <laughs> uh-uh. Not okay. Yeah. Which is why I think they made the choice to like just make that one the Japanese one. I do remember that now that you mentioned that in Dragon Quest VIII, I remember having a kamikaze spell. Mm-hmm. It was introduced in Dragon Quest II. Nowadays, they would call it the un- unalive yourself spell. <laughs> I thought it was also an interesting take on it because normally only a priest is able to cast that spell, but they allow Avan, who is a hero, to cast that spell. This is back in the day when Dragon Quest was still limited by its, like, you know, cla- hero, you know, whatever classes you had. That's why I like, um, you know, the fake party that shows up in the beginning, Morgana? Mm-hmm. They're all based on the Akira Toriyama character designs from Dragon Quest 3. The hero from 3, the, the female priest from 3, the male wizard, and the male warrior. Uh, their names, like the hero's, na- the fake hero's name is Dedori. That was uh, Riku Sanjo's, the writer's, like that's what he named his hero when he played through Dragon Quest Three. Like his final name. <laughs> mm-hmm. A little interesting tidbit there. Oh man, I'm just jumping all over this and just kind of geeking about everything. But yeah, the the first two volumes of, unfortunately, they aren't that great. Especially because the reasons I mentioned how, like, it just kind of started with the uh, the two one-shot series before going to the main series. Koji Inada is basically copying Dragon Ball in a lot of ways with his art style. Especially, like, the design of Dai. Eventually, by the end of, like, the second volume, you kind of see how it changes. Sorry, Morgana. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, some of the monsters were very, like, early Dragon Ball... The oh, animals. That's because, that's because all the Dragon Quest monster designs are Akira Toriyama. Which, yeah, uh, that makes, yeah. I did know that. I think it's some somewhere in the recess of my mind. Um, mm-hmm. And that totally tracks. There was definitely, was, I looked at, there was like a dragon at some point. And I was like, huh, that looks like a weirdo, like. That looks early- like Shenron. <laughs> not, not even Shenron, but like, um, like some of the early, like they're like dinosaurs. I think at the beginning of Dragon yep. Ball, like some of oh, those yeah. like doofy looking kind of <laughs> monsters. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, I have other things to say about Dragon Quest: The Adventure Die, but you know, let's uh, let's move along to Morgana. Please tell me what you thought. About my childhood. Oh no, <laughs> no pressure. Um, no, cute. I mean honestly, I don't care, and I th- I yeah. don't think this is that good at the beginning, so it's fine. Yeah, I think it's it's fine. I definitely think um, as I was reading it, I was like, okay, I can see why this would be appealing to you know like a young six, reader, a six year old boy. You know what I mean? Like this very has that it has that energy. Um, it's very like classic RPG stuff what's what's fascinating is to see that these kinds of um fantasy rpg tropes have kind of come back around into like modern manga a whole lot with yeah with isekai isekai stuff yeah um it's interesting I, i feel like it's very hard to find right now like just a straight up regular fantasy that doesn't hinge on on like 
and here's the demon lord and the hero and the like adventuring party you know uh the D D thing going on um that is 100 percent like dragon quest dna like right just cultural lexicon in japan i mean obviously it all comes from D D and tolkien like that that is like the like the origin of 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 like a lot of these ideas but like the just just going up to somebody in japan and saying like the demon lord or like the hero and stuff like that like th- that recognition comes from dragon quest 100 percent. yeah i mean it's definitely you know coming around to it after having read some of the isekai stuff being like oh you know like here yeah here's kind of like because it feels different still than than the modern stuff it feels especially with some of those silly spell names like very um <sighs> immature is not the word i'm looking for but young like like and i don't just mean like young like it's for young readers but also like the genre is kind of young like yep. for for manga you know what i mean um sis crack yeah <laughs> Spell names are so dumb. Crack. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yes, they are. They're silly. It is also, though, kind of the kind of thing that I can picture, like kids shouting at each other on the playground. So Mm -hmm. I see a lot of kids shouting things on playgrounds these days. (laughs) Oh yeah. Um. So yeah, no, it was cute. I I think it's ultimately. I think I would have enjoyed this more if I were younger. I think I'm old now. Um, but I, as I was reading it, I was like, I wonder when my daughter can read this. Like, <laughs> I feel like she could get into yeah, this. Yeah, and then you got to the set, and, end of volume two. And then there's and like then... a lot of blood. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. She does like I mean, scary and sad stuff, though. She does like scary stuff. I do think, like, definitely not now. I mean, she can't read anyway. But like in a few years, like this kind of might be her shit. I could see her getting into this. Um Hey, you if know. the anime is still on Crunchyroll, I would definitely recommend your daughter to watch, check it out. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see because I because I think she you know she could get into a kind of adventure story. She likes dragons. She likes, I mean, stubborn little boy heroes is kind of the 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 meat and potatoes of the of the shonen world. But I feel like she'd be into it. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was fun. I think that it's not like I'm not like, oh my god, this is the best shonen thing I've ever read. I think I definitely think it's if I had grown up with it, it would be you know a different story. Um, but I've not played Dragon Quest either, so I'm 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 very much an outsider mm-hmm. reading this. Um, I agree, the color pages look really nice, even the four color pages, but and also the full color pages. The designs oh, yeah. are really fun. I like that Avan is kind of dorky looking. <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah. his his hairstyle with the curls on both sides. And I like love it. the random Italian words that he just throws in, like yes, that's because in yeah. like the Japanese he would say it in English. Oh okay, yeah. So yeah, just really funny. Um, de- definitely when when they were like, "You're the hero," I was like, "Wait, why didn't I see that one coming?" Because <laughs> <laughs> he so looks obvious. like a dork. <laughs> Um, I like Pop. Pop is the best. He's Pop. Pop. He's Pop. um Pop. I describe is Sokka from the Avatar: yeah, The Last yeah, Airbender, except totally. he is a better. He is a better Sokka. He's great. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. Um, see, Morgana, you would enjoy this if eventually we get to the point where you the Zuko hasn't showed up yet. Ah, see, there we go. There's there's a Zuko of this well, series then. as well. Sign me up. <laughs> Volume four. And that's uh that is actually where I say this series starts taking off is volume four. So it's kind of a shame we didn't quite get to it. We had to go through a lot of the setup, the cartoony kind of silly first uh one shot chapters that are just kind of introducing everything. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no it's fine. I, I think I I basically said, yeah, like it was, it was a fun read. Um, it's not, it's something that I would read more of if, if requested of me, but it's not something that I'm going to like, I got to devour all of die right now. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I know. 
I know that hurts. <laughs> Uh, may- maybe when Seamus is out again, we'll do a triple dip and we'll read the next collection, and you can yeah. you can see this you can see the Zuko and, and tell me what you think. Yeah, and maybe you'll maybe you'll hook me. It does take off after volume four. Okay, Dar Fox. That's me. Did you finish this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because <laughs> because a little behind the scenes. Yesterday, it was almost midnight, and you're building Gundam. And I was like, Dar, did you start reading? He was like, no. I was like, you're fucked. You are yeah, fucked. Yeah, I, I knew that was going to be an easy read. It, and though it is kind of wordy sometimes, but like I knew it was going to be easy read. Um, So I was just like, I'm just I'm gambling on the other two manga and see what happens. But yeah, I, I was pretty comfortable reading them. Plus, you already saw the story of like the first, you know, a bunch of this because like we we watched some of the anime already yeah i got to see the manga form we kind of watched like the first half of of this of this volume about yeah what do you what do you think you have any comparisons to like the anime um i don't know why i was surprised by the art being like so good and kinetic um and this and it's uh fun to hear that like it gets even better but like I don't know. I, I I I guess I just forget sometimes the the way manga can really um like the simplicity of manga and the simplicity of like um action in a in a, in a book like this can really pop in, in you know with the right artist um and I I think the, the, that's the thing about Dai. It's kind of like just like a very simple thing all around, but it works really well. And it's like it's 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 like everybody's selling it really well. The characters are selling it. The art selling it. It's 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 all it all seems like it it was it was like really like almost heartwarming at the end when Dai was fighting with Hadler, the the, the the demon lord not now he's like the demon general because now there's, there's a demon demon lord. we can just call him the goofy looking elf man yeah. because at the beginning he looks terrible but he gets he gets a redesign as the series goes along which makes him look way more like evil and vicious at the beginning <laughs> when, when he takes off his robe and he has the pointy ass ears and the the fucking pointy hair i'm like dude this design man Classic. Uh, <laughs> this, this, Koji and I got better later. <laughs> yeah, when when the fight was happening and and they were like having like this like weird dialogue, like "Oh, you dastardly villain! My attacks aren't over yet." He's like, "Oh, this this, this whippersnapper is really on my tails." Like it, <laughs> it really felt like I was reading like a Silver Age comic or something, but like in a good way. Like it's like oh th- th- this is like comics and comics for kids, um, so like that energy I think really um, it, it it it's really easy to read and really fun to read. Um, I had a previous page up w- where they had some of the violence, um, yeah, and I kind of like it's kind of interesting how like, uh, Dai he grew up with like monsters right, so like in this world monsters can have like feelings and be like you know like people. But like he still felt he had to murk these monsters, you know. <laughs> he still felt oh, like, like the the gargoyles, yeah. A and B, <laughs> they yeah. like he, like like death to all fascist monsters, and he just fucking killed them. <laughs> he didn't say that, but that's kind of like they're the part subtext. of the yeah, they're part of the, like the Dark Lord's army. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah, I, as long as they signed up, like c- b- b- because like his his own family was like brainwashed to being like evil, so I I couldn't tell if those gargoyles were like. They're just really into like the Dark Lord, or if they like, um, you know, if they got brainwashed. But, <laughs> but they're they're a twenty now. They've literally been cut in half, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's water under the bridge. I don't think this series is asking you to think that hard about it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's just a really cute um and, and, and well drawn series. Um, I, I want to see like what it looks like later on if it looks like much better. Oh, it looks so good. It looks so good. And the story gets so much better. It it, it achieves like this interesting uh, balance act where it's like 
Okay, it, it, of course, it's going to draw comparisons to Akira Toriyama because they're using a lot of Akira Toriyama designs and designs that are kind of like tertiary based off Akira Toriyama stuff. But it, it manages to like not really feel like an Akira Toriyama like copy. It's just like it's his own it's his own thing. Um it it it's it's you still reminded of it with all the designs, but like it it like like in this picture where I have on screen where on, on the on the page on the right where it has um a pop and die react they're like what and then he did it like they're not really drawn exactly like Akira Toriyama would draw them. They're kind of drawn simply in the way that he would draw simply. But like, um, it's it, it isn't just like carbon copy of Akira Toriyama stuff. It, they, they weren't trying to do that. And um, I think if they did, this manga party would have been less successful. Oh, yeah. Koji Inada, he does some really impressive stuff. Obviously, it's a little bit more cartoony and in the style of Akira Toriyama. But... Eventually, he'll show off more and more of his own kind of unique looks to, like, the main characters. And that's also reflected a little in, like, the monsters and stuff like that. But also, like, just, just again, on the same page where, like, the the robe is being, like, burnt off or forced off the demon lord. And the way how it's, like, his silhouette is drawn with, like, the lines of, like, the the smoke cloud or the heat lines. Like oh yeah, that, that, it's it's really impressive stuff. Like really maybe intricate. done by uh, maybe it's done by uh, you know assistants who helped, or possibly done by Koji Neda. This I I don't know if anyone is like what or what Neda from last week when we talked about <laughs> the just man who draws everything. Himself. Yeah, who knows? But yeah, this this all looks very nice. Uh, Cliff and Chad is saying he's gonna watch the anime in dub. That's fine. Yeah. It's fine. No but... dub hate here, usually. But the new anime, I was, I'm telling Dark Fox all these facts in uh, as we watch the uh, the anime, but the new anime was made by people who are incredibly passionate and mega fans of uh, The Adventure of Die. And so it's funny. The, uh, the, the person who plays Die Morgana in the new anime is mm -hmm. Atsumi Tanizaki. She is she's mega popular right now. She's Freyren. She's also um, Anya from Spy Family. Oh. A funny story, uh Princess Leona is played by uh Saori Hayami, who is uh the mom from Spy Family. Your? Yeah, so they're working together <laughs> on that as well. And the uh the guy who plays Popu uh, played Yuri from Yuri on Ice. And it's funny because um, the Dai voice actress, she's a mega pop stan. They did a, when they did the anime, they did a YouTube like watch along kind of series with the voice actors. And they're all just like geeking out about all like the memorable moments from like the series as they're happening. It's great. I'm going to save some more reveals till later till uh, Dar Fox and I are watching some more episodes as they come up. Oh, Dar Fox hasn't seen it in the anime yet, but um Hadler, the demon the dark lord, he's voiced by uh Tomo Sekikazu. Dar Fox you would know him as the main character from G Gundam. Oh, wow. The shining finger guy. So yeah, it's it's got a the anime has a gorgeous Japanese voice cast. So you know, Cliff, you're missing out on them. If you're watching the dub. I'm just <laughs> saying. Oh man, what else can I say about this before we have to move along? Let me just let me just gush about Pop because it's it's not apparent <laughs> how cool Pop is in this like in these first two volumes. He's the magician. He is the most chicken shit coward at the start of this you can see right he's he doesn't take training seriously but he's kind of jealous of like die and he's like spying on him and starts training and training in secret he's obviously crushed by what happens to avon so which you know i thought that was like a bold choice 
you're gonna kill off like the former hero immediately i honestly didn't actually believe he died i didn't see a body so anytime in a comic i don't see a body i'm Mm -hmm. like i don't know might not be dead maybe maybe but yeah uh pop is like he's not an adult he's not a child he's you know sometimes he acts with such bravado but then he runs away you know stot nosed like immediately a lot of stot noses in the series koji you know that likes like characters having stot nosed <laughs> even like the dark lord gets stot nosed when he gets freaked out by die um but yeah pop just his story arc his character arc throughout the adventure of die is probably the best character arc i've ever seen for a side character so much so that he almost surpasses die it's it's actually amazing to see his journey throughout this entire series it's probably one of the best parts of the adventure of die i i can't give spoilers but like the end of what some stuff that he does at the very end is just like i cry every time every time (laughs) cliff is like this is how i gush about dragon ball z (laughs) it's like yeah this is it Everybody's got that one, right? Like, mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Or two or three. Yep, yep. But yeah. This, you know, and I I know, like, I'm just being completely biased here, and, like, it's also nostalgia and rose-covered glasses, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's great. Y'all heard me talk about Yu Yu show for, like, several episodes, so. <laughs> <laughs> And Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, yeah, more complaining, though. Mm. <laughs> this whole series is genocide apology. <laughs> Dar- did you do you see this meme image that Dar pulled up on the fucking YouTube stream? <laughs> oh man! For ever, for audio listeners, it's the meme of the guy at a baseball game with a girl, and he's got his hand around the girl, and he's got sunglasses, and he's telling her something, and the girl looks like. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's that one. Yeah, that's me. We've all been that. We've all been that girl. We've all been that guy. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a few of these. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I uh, I hope uh, if anyone's interested, they'll take a look at The Adventure of Die, Dragon Quest. And if, if, if anything, check out the anime. The anime is like such a good representation of the uh the source material this manga and yeah it's it's made with love it's made with love ignore the 12 frame 3d animated monsters in episode one okay (laughs) and the and the 3d animated battle in episode two against the killer machine that looks that looks looks pretty good yeah it's it's all right there's a really good 3d animated battle that people refer to a god tier like anime episode in the future so dark and look forward to that but yeah it's a simple series from a simpler time and it grows and becomes even better i mean dar if you want to see an example of koji inada's current art you can look at the cover because like he redrew all the cover images for this and you see like how it's a it's a much more refined look of dai compared to what you see in volume one. But yeah, I uh I, I can I can stop ranting about <laughs> Dragon Quest Adventure of Die for now. See, I didn't take as long as Darfox did on Dragon. <laughs> I'm looking at the timestamp right now. But are you sure? I'm sure. Unless uh unless there's anything uh you either of you wanna like mention that I didn't talk about. Um, no, not, not really. I think we covered it. Oh, wait, there's one thing I forgot to mention. At the end of volume two, you get to see, like, Hadler's back, and he's, like, in front of his, you know, demon army. And then they talk about, like, the different legions to make up, like, <laughs> the the six, the Dark King's six legions. I was like, this is such a, like, a fucking... <laughs> 
video game thing and a thing that little kids get excited about. Yes. About like putting like the different monsters in categories. I was like, what a thing. All the commanders of those legions are awesome, by the way, in their own way. They're going to be good villains for Dai to go up against. Dark Fox can look forward to that. And yeah, Morgana, you you said it. It's on recorded on the podcast, so like I may I may have us come back in a twiple dip in the future for this. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you offered. I'm accepting. But yeah, let us move along to another title. Uh, Darfox, why don't you pick the next one? Let's speak if about Kemono Jihen. Okay, another shonen battle manga type situation. Kemono Jihen, a manga by Sho Aimoto. I believe uh, it is a female manga artist. Let's see. This manga started in 2017. It runs in Square er, Jump Square magazine, which is a monthly magazine. But it is not published in English by Viz. It's published in English by Seven Seas. Uh, it is currently 20 volumes and ongoing. Let me give you the localization staff. Translation by Althea and Athena Nibley. Lettering Chris Bergener. Cover design H. Kui. Proofreader Dan Murray. Senior copy editor Don Davis. Editor Linda Lombardi. Let me read the copy. Hold on, Seven Seas Entertainment is verifying if I'm a human. Oh yeah, I don't know why their site does that. I don't know. Okay. In a quiet rural village, livestock has been dying off in a strange manner. Inugami, a detective of the occult, is summoned from Tokyo to solve the mystery. He meets a boy scorned by the villagers, who call him Dorotabo, after a yokoi that dwells in the muddy fields. Inugami soon learns that there is more to the boy than meets the eye, and vice versa. So yeah, um, this manga, the main character that's mentioned in the copy is Kabane. And uh, yeah, the detective Inukami comes to meet him, uh, recognizes that he is indeed a... Uh, Part yokai. What would wait? I forget. What did they, I read this first? So it's been a while. What did they call the monster that he, the yokai he was based on? I do not remember. Cooler, cooler. Okay, good. It was the same as his Japanese. I was about to say cooler. I was wasn't sure if they changed that. He's a cooler, but essentially he's. Basically, an immortal ghoul kind of situation. Yeah, like he's like bloodless and doesn't die, right? Yeah. And has no sense of pain. And he grew up kind of in a cruel environment, so he has no human emotions. So it's about a yokai boy with no emotions learning to have humanity as he helps Inukami, the detective, solve cases. And also, you get to meet two other kids who work with Inukami. We have uh, Shiki. And we have Akira. I don't think we learn what Akira is in this first volume. Uh, no, I don't think so. Other okay. than male, ostensibly. Yes. And then, but Shiki can make webs. He's Spider Man. So cool. <laughs> I know Morgana wants to talk about this, but I'm going to throw to Darfox first. 
Me. Me, 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 <laughs> me, me. me. Uh, Dar, tell us about what you thought about Kevin Ojihan. I, I I like the art a lot. Um, I I think it's a it's it's it, it's it's an okay start, but really what what I like most about it and what I'd want to read more about was just like the kind of kids bouncing off each other. Um, that was like the most interesting thing. Um, I I do like Mister Tanuki Detective. He's he seems like a pretty cool guy. Mm-hmm. Um, very scruffy and rough around the edges, but I think he's doing some good. Um, but like just seeing like um, did you say his name was Shiki? The yeah, Shiki is the the spider boy. Yeah, like just seeing Shiki be be like, okay, I'm gonna hate this kid right now, and then later he's like kind of goofing around. He's like, no, hold on, hold on, I'm supposed to hate this kid. I'm not like I can't be chummy with him, and that kind of like um kid who's really easy to make friends with um okay and, yeah yeah and 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 they're like j- just their interplay and they're bouncing off each other i thought was uh really fun and uh pretty well written um and again that's what i want to see more of i'm less interested in like the fox demon thing that appeared at the end it seemed like there were going to be you know villains or whatever um I'm even less interested in like learning about their their parents and stuff. Oh, um, how Kevin is trying to find his parents. Yeah, I kind yeah. of I kind of don't care about the parents. Um, I know I understand why he cares about the parents. To be clear, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> so like whether or not I'm going to like this series, it's kind of hinges upon is it just going to focus on. But by the way, like in case it wasn't clear, it is the most boilerplate shown in like premise is like. Every like shonen idea where like the main character is has a demon or is part demon, and then they are a demon fighter now or so or something along those lines. They even have a name for them. I'll Use forget. those yokai powers for good. What, what what did they call the people who fight the demons? They had a name for it. Um, what's weird? Like synergist or some some weird thing like that. Kemono is. Kemono is was that it? Kemono is yeah. Okay, yeah. Um. All that stuff was like whatever. It's like it's the it might be good, it might be bad. The fights might be good, might be bad. I don't I'm I'm not interested until I see like a really cool hype fight or anything like that. <laughs> but I am interested in like just the kids. Like they I feel like they kinda capture that like thirteen to fourteen, fifteen year old kind of like interplay how how like these kids would would talk to each other. Um that you know, they they're 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 basically um young teens. Um and that was my biggest takeaway of it. Yeah, it's kind of a tease, this volume one. And it's it's partly because it runs in Jump Square magazine, which is a monthly magazine. So the chapters are longer. So we only get three chapters into Kemono Jihen in volume one. And it's kind of a shame because as you mentioned, Dar Fox, it only just is a lot of setup, meeting these characters, learning about Kabane. We don't get to see any kind of fun stuff yet. Uh, I should mention Sho Aimoto, the manga creator behind this. She did a series in Weekly Shonen Jump called Hokenshi no Shinigami, which was in 2007. And it was, a, it was a decently popular series. It ran for 10 volumes, though. So not, you know, not popular enough to get, like, a super long run, unfortunately. But Kemono Jihan has been very popular and very well received. Okay, we'll go to Morgana. Morgana, tell us how much you like this. I didn't <laughs> like this. I did enjoy it. I agree with Dar Fox about the interplay between the kids. Um, there's something kind of old school about it. Uh, it reminds me of older shonen manga that I enjoyed. Um... I feel like a lot of I mean I haven't I haven't honestly I haven't read a ton of like modern shonen these days but I feel like a lot of it kind of centers on the individual protagonist a lot more and not as much on the interplay um so I I did enjoy those those parts as well so it's like reading fan fiction but it's like there in front of you you know like oh here's and here's what the kids do on their days <laughs> off 
Um, I I really I like the premise. I like you know I mean it's it's yokai it's mononoke. I'm I'm gonna like this. There's you know kids wearing skeleton hoodies. Like I I'm here. I'm here for it. Um, I think the art is very good. I don't think it's like extremely interesting. Uh, like, I don't know if, if I didn't like know what this is about, if I wasn't like already intrigued by the premise, I don't know that I would have picked this up based on the artwork. Mm, um, interesting. I, I don't think it's bad. I want to, I want to be clear. Like, I think it's very good artwork and I think it's, you know, it's just not like a lot of the stuff I like that has yokai in it, that have monsters that have, you know, kind of this mythology in it look very distinct from other manga and this has a lot more like i don't want to say generic i don't think that's fair but it's it's just not like kind of straightforward like, yeah yeah th th there's very little accent put on it um it's not super creepy looking i mean there there are bits and pieces of it that are you know but even that i was like okay like I don't know. Uh, again, I want I want to emphasize it's not bad, and I enjoy it. It's just not something I would have been like, oh man, I gotta read this. Like, you know, it looks so cool. Um, but it's I a clean look. Yes, for readability. Yes, which might also be part of my complaint because I'm 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 give bored. me the weird shit. Give, give me the, the Q Hayashida. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of Q Hayashida. The the like. I know when I think about yokai, this isn't fair because it's an anime, but um, I don't know if you guys have seen Mononoke, uh, which is a really cool anime about Mononoke and yokai. Um, and it's just got such a distinct look uh, about it. So um, I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of the stuff I like that has yokai or has monsters has a very distinct look. And this is yeah it's, it's very clean it's very kind of straightforward like like dark fox was saying it's not bad at all it's very good artwork it's just not like pushing it over the top for me um but i really enjoyed this one i probably enjoyed this one the most of the three that we read um because of course i fucking did <laughs> <laughs> Um, what if I told you all the kids have tragic backstories that of they have to get they into? Of course they do. Of course they do. And solve their problems. I do have one nitpick. Oh. Uh, in the bonus stories, there's a bit, I think it was the bonus stories, where they kind of go about like, here's like a day in the life and they're all like bored because they're waiting for an assignment. Mm -hmm. Akira showers three times. That is terrible for your hair and skin. And if he's actually that invested in his hair and skin, he would not be showering three times a day. Just putting that out there. It's actually really not good for you. It dries you with the fuck out. So there. That's my this, you know, I was like It's like me complaining about singing shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was just one of those things like, who who wrote this? They know nothing about taking <laughs> care of their hair. Um I assumed it was a man who wrote it, so that's that's on me. But uh yeah, it's not good. It's not good nah, for you. Joke's on you. Sure, Aimoto knows nothing about cleaning her hair. Yeah, I guess so. Um, she probably does not shower three times a day, though. Because who the hell has time for that when you're making manga? Mm -hmm. uh, I like Akira. I also have, like, mixed feelings about the, like, uh, foppish boy character who's like, I'm not, I'm not a girl. Um, just you know it's 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 fun i like that i always like the, the feminine character it's 110 percent of the time um but i always have mixed feelings about how that's portrayed uh, and i'd like to see more of how he comes across and i'm very curious to know more about what kind of monster he is what kind of yokai you want to take a guess i could tell you Uh, is, is there a boy girl uh, yokai? Oh, probably there's yokai for everything. I'm thinking maybe like a bakeneko, but that's because my because I want him to be a bakeneko because I like cats. Um, he is not a bakeneko. That does not surprise me. 
I don't think he's a fox because we've already got the other fox lady. Mm -hmm. He is a Yuki Otoko. You know, I was going to ask if he was a Yuki Onna. <laughs> yes. And there's a story because usually Dark Fox Yuki Onna is like uh, snow, snow maiden. Yeah, snow maiden. They usually seduce men who get lost in snow blizzards and then like freeze them to death. Kind of like a siren. Yeah. Is he supposed to have white hair? That's yes. why I was. That's, yes. Yeah. See, that's why I was. I was wondering. I was like, oh, the white hair. Maybe he's like a Yukiona. And yeah, and there's a reason why he's a boy and not a, you know, a girl. This is some he background bullshit. Well, but yeah, he's a uh, born to the ice maidens. Mm -hmm. But he's not fire. He, he is right. Ice. Right. Yeah. Um. I like this series more as I read it. I think I had a similar kind of like, oh, this is good, but it's not like great. At the very end of this first volume, you get to see like the uh, the fox lady and she has like a little kid girl behind her. I like that little kid girl. She's a fun character. Is she a cat or is she also a fox? She has she little is, ears. She, she is also a fox and then... She develops a relationship with Kabane, and I think it's just very cute. It's a cute relationship between two characters who don't understand what love is. <laughs> or what affection should be. <laughs> it's, I like that. We're just going to stumble through this shit together, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, the current story is pretty wild because they've been some like huge shakeups and like everything that's been happening in the world between yokai and humans so i feel like the story could be on the path towards the end but there's still like still a lot happening so and it's good i i, I like uh kimono jihan a lot it's pretty interesting morgana uh to hear what you thought about kind of like the art style because I, I knew you would love the Yokai Kids story. Oh, yeah, it's like catnip. Mm hmm. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else, but I think both of you pretty much covered it. Is there anything else, Star? Nope. All right, let's move along from Kemono Jihen and go to our final series. Papa and Daddy's Home Cooking. This manga is put out by Yu Toyota. Let's see. Uh, it ran in Comic Bunch magazine, which unfortunately recently closed. <laughs> so that's a dead magazine now. It started in 2014. Uh, it is licensed in English. It says, uh, I think these uh, volume releases are done by Medi Medibang, and they're digital only. There's no localization credits for this, I don't I, think. I think Medibang is a Japanese company. So it's one of those situations where we're just not going to credit people. Yeah, like, like Media, though. Bunch of freelancers and... Mm-hmm. Cogs in the machine. They it's don't okay. even have a website. Like I, I only have the only link I had to this was off of Amazon. This was an immaculate translation. It just <laughs> came from the bosom of God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me read the copy here on Amazon. Then, Sengoku, a chiropractor, was left with a child by his willful ex Harumi. A manga. Wait, sorry. <laughs> That's well, that, that was the end of the sentence. A manga. Harumi, a manga editor, gained custody of his child after a rough divorce. Each struggling to raise their own child, they decide to share an apartment in the suburbs. What twists and turns await their new family life? Follow them in volume one as they fumble to find a recipe for new happiness. More like Pop's life, am I right? <laughs> Not Pop life, but Pop. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very much like that. Um, 
Yeah, Papa and Daddy's Home Cooking. Japanese title, Papa to Oyaji no Uchi Gohan. I was wondering how they're going to translate Oyaji, because that's like a very kind of a gruff way of calling your dad. And they change it to uh, Papa and Daddy. It may, it may have, I would have maybe gone with Papa and Pops home cooking or something like that. Papa and old man. <laughs> my old man. Papa and this fucker. <laughs> my, my old man. Um, I've talked about this manga before. I really like it. I thought it was a cute, you know, food manga about like single fathers thrust in this situation with their young kids and trying to like learn to cook and satisfy their kids. And it was really nice. And then I saw it was licensed in English and people were like like pushing it as a BL story and I was like, huh? Yeah, so I was thinking about that. I think I know why. It's because this creator's other work is BL. Uh they do this cherry magic. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Which I think had an anime also. Don't which is a rarity. Wishes. You know, I watched some of the anime with my wife. It was pretty good. But yes, let's talk about Papa and Daddy's Home Cooking, a manga series where I've gotten some recipes out of. At the back of this first volume, they have all the recipes and how to cook them in here. Like curry and rice, rolled omelets, fried gyoza, Hawaiian pancakes. I don't you, think they're Hawaiian pancakes. Do you have a pan for ro rolled omelets? One of those square pans? Oh, like the Japanese ones? Yeah. My mom did. Mm. Uh, but I do not. I usually just make a sunny side up egg. The rolled omelet eggs are pain in the ass to make, <laughs> as, as you saw. So tasty, though. Yeah, they're, they're very good. But that's usually because like you, you don't just use eggs. You mix in some dashi broth. That, that adds the flavor. And sugar. Mm -hmm. Morgana, what do you think about this uh, whole, uh, food manga? It was super cute. Um, I'm also a sucker for like found family shit. Uh, and I like characters like, um, I can't remember his name, the chiropractor. Sengoku, aka Sengoku. Sensui from Yu Yu Hakusho. Right, I know he does look like him, but he's got that like um, rough exterior, kind of a big softy thing going on, and I am, like I said, a sucker for that. Um, and I can see, you know, I don't, I don't, certainly from this first volume, this is not BL, um, but I can also see the argument of like, they are like, the um Harumi is kind of learning the the flaws in his relationship with his ex-wife through this relationship with another dad kind of mm -hmm. um so there is a there's a relationship there i don't know that it's romantic in any in any way but it is a partnership right they are raising their children together see, yeah see i've read the whole thing and it's like it's a friendship that's what it yeah. is yeah well, they, partnerships could also be like like relationships could also be like sexless and like yeah they're co-parenting they're they're not they're not married they're not in love they're just they're just raising kids together i don't think you necessarily need to be romantically involved to do that um i feel like that's what pop life was about too um <laughs> yeah the kids are cute very very four years old um, yeah irie irie especially Yes, I will say it's very bad advice to blend up vegetables and hide them in your children's food. <gasps> it doesn't work for you? No, well, no, I'm going to tell you why it's bad advice. Because then your kid doesn't know what the vegetable tastes like. So it's not like they're going to seek it out ever. Um, they're, they're not going to know what it tastes like. They're not going to know if they like it or not. It's better practice to continually offer the food. And if they like it, they like it. And if they don't, they don't. Um, kids preschoolers especially four-year-olds are really picky like my daughter was an excellent eater she ate everything loved everything and in the last i don't know six months she's become terrible um she won't eat a lot of things she's very picky and it's not that she's picky 
It's that she's just asserting her kind of authority. Just, there's very little control over things in her life, but she can control what she puts in her mouth, right? <laughs> um, so, so a lot of the advice that I have learned is that you just kind of got to keep offering and, you know, make it no pressure and let them kind of discover it on their own, whether or not they like it. Um, I do think like they... <laughs> that that blending up the vegetables thing was one very small blip i think otherwise like getting your kids involved in cooking is a great idea like getting them in the kitchen and if they make the food they're like more likely to be interested in eating the food too and they see what goes into it um give them kind of pride you know for, for getting something you know making something um completing completing the task making something edible so yeah, I think it's great. Um, we try to get my my daughter in the kitchen a lot. She likes baking a lot. Um, it's a lot of fun to watch her kind of figure it out. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very pro like cooking with your kids and cooking with your kids in mind and giving them foods that are not just like chicken nuggets. Um, so some some nights you just do what's easy and that's also fine. No judgment. Um, but don't blend up vegetables and hide them. It's not going to do. It's not going to do them any favors in the long run. All right. Might as well just inject it with nutrients at that point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, give them like the the food pill, right, or whatever. Um, it's not going to teach them to enjoy the food. It's just going to, and and if they ever find out, it's going to teach them not to trust you because you're hiding shit from them. You know what I mean? Like that's like kind of a, a an extreme way of thinking about it, but like. Don't hide shit from your kids. It's not. It's not necessary. Okay, Dar Fox, what did you think of this food manga? I really liked it. It was very fun to read. It was heartwarming. It was kind of funny how much of. I don't know if I should call him an asshole, but sometimes he's a little bit of, of like he's a little bit too, a little too rough around the edges. The the sensory dad, yes, um, Sengok. Yeah, but I also feel like the other dad can, can be the other kind of asshole where like he's just like a little too passive, and mm-hmm. I think and he, and, he, and, he, and he's learning about that too. So like it, it they really are contrasted really well, um, and I, it's I, the odd couple, and and the kids are yeah. not, the kids are also like the odd couple. They contrasted really well in that like. You know, the, the, the girl is the hyperactive kid, kind of how you expect, you know, four-year-olds to be. And then the other kids, he's like that kid that some people might worry about <laughs> because they're a little too serious, you know? Um, and c- clearly, like, a very smart and introspective kid, but, like, he, he, it's, it's harder to tell when they need help kind of kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I really, really liked it. Um, do we get more of those cooking sisters? Yes. Okay. That was a, that 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 like I I like those chapters, but that, that was like a crazy. It like, was intense. Journey, that was a journey. Yes. <laughs> um, it, like f- first of all, like the sister just being super like overprotective, like to to like a crazy extent. Um, and them getting their backstory, and them getting like the twist at the end, like oh, it was like a false accusation because we fucking hated this guy who's beating our mom. Oh, like oh, holy shit, that's crazy. So. That's storytelling, people. Like you, tw- <laughs> you twist and then you twist again. Um, which obviously, like Hall Stargazation stuff, is really uh, crazy and, and and terrible. But like in the context of, of of the book, it was really funny and kind of kind of awesome. <laughs> um, there's a there's a lot of drama even in this first volume. <laughs> is there is there like a don't call the FBI? Is there like a love story between? The sensory dad and and the high school girl, is that going to be a thing? Dar, how did you know? Oh fuck! Because no, okay, listen, Morgana, the high school girl is going to de- develop like a crush on him, but it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, he he seems more sensible than that. Yes, they're not gonna. He's not gonna have a new girlfriend. The FBI just drove past my window. They're like, not this time, but next time. They just, <laughs> just drove. They just kept driving. Uh, yeah, like I, I, I your, think <laughs> your personal NSA agent just wiped their brow. Like, <laughs> Close one, guys. <laughs> yeah, 
No, uh, there's gonna be uh, there's gonna be drama with Harumi's uh, ex wife, kind of involving the son Seichiro. There's also some drama with Harumi's mom being concerned. There's a lot of concern about like public perception of these two men raising like kids together, which sucks. Like, but I I I think you kind of have to include that in the story a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and it does get resolved, and like people eventually like support them and back them up, so that's good. Uh, people are so weird about dads and like the role of dads, and you know, like I don't know. I it's fathers are also parents who care about their children and take care of their children. I think there are a lot of fathers who haven't got got the memo um mm -hmm. but more so than ever before you know millennial dads for sure um are, are doing a lot more hands-on parenting and i think that there's still a societal perception certainly here in the united states that that's somehow an anomaly uh but i don't think it's an anomaly at all i think it's much much more common this isn't directly related but it's a fucking crazy story about like people that deal about gender and stuff like that. And I, 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 I promise you, I don't like telling stories about coworkers and shit like that. Cause I think it's tacky to be like, my coworker did this to like a whole internet audience, but this happened a long time ago and they don't work there anymore. Um, but give us the dirt. <laughs> like I had one coworker who's my age and their best friend, um, is a gay guy and she hangs out with him all the time. They're like, they're like Disney people. That's the worst thing I could say about them that they're Disney people. <laughs> they like go to Dis <laughs> they, they, they like go to Disney all the time and, and they're, they're those people. Um and, and she has a husband um who, who who I know pretty well. Um and he's a cool guy, but he's like I mean he enjoys theme parks just fine, but he's not gonna go every other weekend to Disney. He doesn't fucking care about it that much, right? Um so she goes with her gay friend, like best friend, gay friend. They know each other for years. And my other coworker, who's like the boomer of boomiest uh, boomers, oh boy. She, she's she's like, how could she be spending so much time with another man? She's married. I'm like, what well, are friends? Um, and like, but she's married. And I'm like, what? Also, also, he's gay. And then she's like, nah. Like my husband would never. My husband, like, like just just like the expectations of like gender and w what you're supposed to do. Like, it's no wonder that. You have like, you know, so some people like Mike Pence be like, I refuse to like have dinner with other women or some shit like that. It's like a specific brain raw of that generation. Um, so weird because like I've gone to the movies with my male friends who are not necessarily gay um, without my husband. You know, like he doesn't he, he trusts me. I've gone to conventions and and like shared housing with male friends i've like slept at a male friend's house you know when i was visiting another you know city like with with absolutely no like it wasn't anything fishy my husband wasn't worried you know like it's just such a weird thing that like yeah this like well you know men and women can't be just friends you know or whatever it, it it really is like the, the the genders are like are so restrictive. There's so many rules placed upon them, um. Like and that that's why I was thinking about it with, with like what fathers are supposed to do, um, and and, and um, it, it like it's, it's it's such a like not narrow way to live. It, it's kind of nuts. I don't know. I guess people of that generation, once they became married, they literally stopped talking to people of the other sex. It just, it, they just would. I, I don't fucking know. I don't, I don't know how it worked. I don't know how society didn't break apart the moment they already got married. You know, <laughs> 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 like, how, like I can't buy this fucking like toilet paper from this like lady because she's a girl. And like on the other hand, you know, talking about the the roles of, of fathers, like, like when my daughter was born, my husband. Um, you know, they do this thing called skin to skin where, you, you know, it's it's really good for the baby 
um, and for the bonding to put your baby just just in their diaper, like on your bare chest. And this is recommended for mothers who want to breastfeed. Um, but it's also recommended for dads to do too. So you kind of have this bonding experience where, you know, your hearts are beating next to each other. There's like that body warmth. And my husband did this with our daughter in the hospital and the nurses were like, oh, you're such a good dad. Oh, you're such a cool dad. You're so, you're going to, how great you're going to do so. And I'm like, I'm fucking bleeding from my crotch and like, <laughs> <laughs> like my nipples are leaking and I feel sick. And he's like dad of the year over here. All he had to do was hold my fucking hand. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Which and, and he he's like, it makes me so uncomfortable. I'm not doing anything crazy. Like I'm doing the bare minimum of what I'm supposed to do as a parent. But even that, Morgana, is not what probably yeah. the majority of guys do. So. I know, I know. And, and that's, that's nuts. fucking sad. Yeah, yeah. Uh he's like, I don't want to be praised for doing like my job as a parent. Like that's not that's ridiculous. Um but yeah, every, everybody. Oh, you're so. Oh, you're so so good with your kid. Oh, so good with your daughter. Oh, you're so. What are you change all those diapers? Oh my god. You know, like, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do I. Jesus. Um, I. It's you know, I I won't. I don't get enough credit because I went and had a partner who was you know halfway competent. I guess and he gets all the <laughs> the glory. <laughs> but yeah, people are weird, 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 weird about gendered roles around family. Yeah. and other other things that's uh unfortunately that is kind of like drives the drama here in papa and daddy's home cooking if if it's delivered with this kind of energy and like this kind of like like i said i thought this book was really easy to read um i'm fine with it yeah you know they they get brought up but then they get pretty answered pretty fast so it's it's good. I would not recommend us to check this out unless I thought if if it was doing something weird or bad or whatever. I mean, even though Harumi slashed the man in the wrist. That was so fun. I hurt I I hurt somebody once with a knife and I was like, "Oh my god, was he in like a gang?" and then he's like, "It was an accident." Like he was trying to total like, mistake. he was trying to save them. And yep. he hurt them. Like that comes dude. up later. Go to therapy. Mm -hmm. Work on your communication skills. Get you know, over there, knives. There's a spinoff to Papa and Daddy's Home Cooking called Papa to Oyaji no Uchi no Mi, which translates to Papa and Daddy's Drinking at Home. Hell yeah. So it's, it's more food, but it also involves like, okay, the kids are asleep. Fucking break out the beer. <laughs> Let's eat some edamame. <laughs> I mean, there were so many of those those meals where I'm like, oh, that would be really good with some beer. Yep. Get some Sapporo going with that curry. Delicious. They were doing that, you know, beachside barbecue, and Sengoku's like, I want a beer. And Rumi's like, I'll drive back. He's like, yes! It's the best. But yeah, this is, this is a really good cooking manga. It's very... A very warm, heartwarming, very sweet, saccharine. It's not for Seamus. <laughs> Absolutely not. There's food, there's there's children. <laughs> there's good there's, feelings. Yeah, no. Maybe if that uh, false accusation happened, he'd be like, okay, let's see where this goes. Yeah, yeah. If the book was all about like false accusations, I'll be crazy. happening. That's called uh, Shield Hero. It's a very popular anime right now. Oh God, please! Oh, I didn't see this message from Don in chat. One of my partner's best friends is a woman. They text every day, but I don't care at all. Why should I? All they do is talk about wrestling, which makes sense because I don't care about that. Lol. Probably texting up a storm today. Yep. The WrestleMania. Okay. Morgana, do you want to make any of the recipes here in this volume? Mm. I want to eat them. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, I was actually kind of curious about the pancakes because my husband makes like a 
special breakfast every Saturday. This morning we had waffles. But I was telling him about like we were talking about pancakes. I, I've asked him before if he ever wants to make those like those Costello pancakes. You know those really big, fluffy. thick, fluffy ones. Yeah, like the souffle um, ones. Yeah, or the wobblies. Yeah, I'm curious about about those. Um, so far, we're very. It's very basic. It's do, do pancakes. We do waffles. Sometimes we do like, you know, breakfast sandwiches. But maybe maybe the fancy pancakes one of these days. I recently saw a uh, Kenji Lopez out uh, video where he made gyoza, and I was like, for half a second, I was like, man, should I fucking try and make some gyoza, some like homemade gyoza? Or, like, no. That looks like a really fun one to do with kids, because there's Dar- a lot of a- yeah. Sorry, Morgan, go ahead. I was gonna say there's just a lot of hands-on stuff. It's like a lot of like fun. It's fun, you know. Well, th- the way Kenji described it is that. He, he, his mom would basically she'd make the filling and stuff but then she'd give the filling to, to him and his sisters and they'd watch TV and make the gyoza and then they'd freeze them all and have it for like the next few weeks um, so yeah it was a it was like a family thing <clears throat> oh yeah homemade gyoza tastes amazing plus you can put a lot of fun stuff in them like fill some put some cheese and some Ooh. Put some shiso, put some umeboshi, change up the flavors. But uh it's a it's a process dar. Like I didn't make the skins, I just like made the insides and my wife and I did it and she was like, This is great, but maybe not for a while. <laughs> yeah. You asked me if I want to make any of these recipes and I've I've learned something about myself, which is that I don't like cooking. I like big projects. So like I want to bake like 400 cookies or like decorate a whole bunch of cupcakes like really fancy or um, like make handmade pasta. Like those are the things I enjoy doing in the kitchen. I don't want to just like cook dinner every night. That's not my... I'm not interested in that. That's like a, a means to an end. Like, no, I want a project. <laughs> so gyoza is something that would suit me, but I would, could only do it, yeah, once in a while. Yep. Well, yeah, Papa and Daddy's Home Cooking. It's a good food manga. It's got decently fun drama. And it's heartwarming. It's nice. I feel like story wise, maybe uh what are you eat what are what did you eat yesterday might be a little better. But this it's, one's very nice. It's not fair to compare to Fumi Yoshinaga. <laughs> <laughs> what did you eat yesterday? I would say I felt like it was a little bit drier than this. This is a little bit more high energy because the Well it's got kids. kids, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So take that as you will. People I, I see it entirely possible people might like this book more. Just because it's just because of the energy. Mm-hmm. But if you're hoping for Sengoku and Harumi to start kissing and making out, I'm sorry. This it's not that kind of book. Though it's funny, what Harumi, Harumi works with you know he's a manga editor, and later we meet some uh, manga artists, and one, the manga artist is like launches a hit series, and like the two main characters are modeled off of Sengoku and Harumi. It's very obvious. So that's fun. <laughs> Putting the BL in the story without actually being a BL. Okay, I think we're done with Papa and Daddy's home cooking, which means we finished this triple dip. Wow, we. It's a good one. It's a good one. We didn't go quite as long as when we did Trigun and Hajime no Ippo. What was the third one in that? I don't even remember. Doesn't matter. No, yeah. you know, uh, I made a, I made, I was making a clip and I never uploaded it. It was, um, wasn't it like a shoujo book? Scum's Wish. Oh, oh, yeah, so by Yen Press, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> Morgana of Yen Press doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it does. I could, I didn't remember. No, yeah, but I. It was the least memorable conversation of the <laughs> of the three for sure. Yeah, I mean, you got Darfox geeking out about Trigon, then you got 
me and Darfox geek out on a Hajime no so yeah. But here, we are at the end of our triple dip, which means it's time to uh, give a ranking of sorts. This is actually a little hard for me because I like all three of these manga. I think they're all very good. But just making a flash decision now, I'm going to say Dai is number one, Papa and Daddy's Home Cooking 2, and then Kimono Jihan 3. <coughs> Dar Fox, what say you? How do you rank these? Ooh, I feel bad. Kimono Jihan also might be three for me. Um, even though I thought that was good work. It's crazy. I kind of want to put Papa and Daddy's Home Cooking number one. Dar Fox likes the nice, heartwarming vibes of food. Also, Dar Fox loves food. Sometimes. So sometimes <laughs> sometimes cooking manga, like, I, I can't be bothered, like Seamus would say. But this had enough character stuff, and it was, it was, it was fun to read. And Dai and, and was a little bit of a known quantity because we had been watching the anime. So it made less of an impression on me than this. Okay. <laughs> Don is like, Dai's number one for Daksu. Shocking. <laughs> Shocking. Uh, Morgana, what is your ranking? Mine, I think, is the inverse of yours, Dakazu. I've got Kimono Jihen first, then Papa and Daddy, and then Dai. And it's not, I, you know, putting Dai last feels mean. Um, it's fine. Last but not least, you know, kind of. Yeah, hey, it's our personal rankings. It's fine. When it's, when it's three items, like... Something has Some, to go last. Something's yeah. got to be last. Yeah, and, and it, it always feels like a slight, but it's like not, it's, it's not really, but it feels like a slight. Yeah, and, and unless it is. And sometimes it is. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it very much is. Rarely. The, the reality is, is the other two are just way more my kind of book than than die. Mm-hmm. So that is that is how the chips fall. And yeah, that is fine. So that will be this episode. I want to thank Darfox and Morgana for joining me this week. Shout outs to Cliff and uh, Don in our chat. Make sure you can check out our uh, live recording over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV. And don't forget to check out uh, Mungamac Watches, our new YouTube channel. Yes, please. Or Darfox. Yeah, Darfox uploaded the our watch along commentary for the first two episodes of Dragon Quest: The Adventure of Dai, and we'll have more stuff going up there soon. Make sure to check out our website, mangamachinations dot com. Our Tumblr is mangamachinations.tumblr.com. dot dot com. Oh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to us, review us, rate us. On Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you can find us. Send us emails, mangamachinations at gmail.com. You can join that, discord.me slash mangamac. Come play Mahjong with us. We're playing every Monday night. Find information about that on our Discord. Oh, don't forget to support us on coffee buy us a coffee ko-fi.com slash manga mac and you can follow us on social media at manga mac podcast that's manga mac podcast that's for uh twitter instagram threads blue sky all the other social media and you can follow my personal social media at doc zoo follow darfox at darfox8 and follow Morgana at Morgana Relita. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to us tonight. Bye-bye.